I want to ask the Prime Minister finally about the reported amnesty for crimes committed during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. I worked in Northern Ireland for six years with the policing board and the police. I have also prosecuted terrorists as the Director of Public Prosecutions, so I know how difficult and how sensitive this is. But a blanket amnesty, including for terrorists, is plain wrong. I was in Northern Ireland last week, and it's absolutely clear that the government's amnesty is not supported by the political parties in Northern Ireland, and it's not supported by victims' groups. Last Thursday, I spoke to victims of terrorism at the Wave Trauma Centre in North Belfast. Mr Speaker, they haven't even been properly consulted on this proposal. If things are to move forward in Northern Ireland, any discussion has to start with the victims. Politicians in London can't simply draw a line under terrorism and other crimes and then force it on those most affected. The Prime Minister looks up, so let him look up and let him hear. Because I want to quote Julie Hamilton, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister. Her sister Maxine was among the 21 people killed by the IRA in the Birmingham pub bombings. So that's Julie Hamilton, Prime Minister. She says, tell me, Prime Minister, if one of your loved ones was blown up beyond recognition, where you were only able to identify your son or daughter by their fingernails, would you be so quick to grant their murderers an amnesty and propose such obscene legislation? What does the Prime Minister have to say to Julie, and she's listening, and other victims like her? Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I think that the uh, whole House will acknowledge the suffering of victims like Julie and their, and their families. And, uh, of course, nothing I say or, uh, or can do now can in any way mitigate her, her loss, and, and that, is, uh, that is clear. Uh, but it is also true that the people of Northern Ireland uh, must, if we possibly can allow them to, they must move forwards now. And uh, he, he will know... Uh, that the proposals that are being brought forward and the House will hear about them in more detail later on from my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. The proposals that are being brought forward are, are measured, they are balanced and they have a wide degree of support, I may say, uh, from former Labour Prime Ministers and former Labour leaders who I think are of considerable more, dis more distinction, uh, I may say, than the, than the right honourable gentleman opposite. And uh, he will recall that it was under uh, that Labour administration that many uh, terrorists uh, were unfortunately uh, given effectively an amnesty, yeah. and th they were allowed to escape the full consequences of their crimes, as he knows very well. And that, was, that is the reality. Whilst the sad fact remains that, and this, this is of course uh, no consolation to uh, people like Julie, but the sad fact remains that there are many members of the armed services who continue to face the threat of vexatious uh, prosecutions uh, well into their uh, 70s and 80s and later, and we are finally, Mr Speaker, bringing forward a solution to this problem, to enable the province of Northern Ireland to draw a line under the Troubles, to enable the people of Northern Ireland to move forward. And I think someone with greater statesmanship and clarity of vision would have seen that, uh, Mr Speaker, and given these proposals a fair wind. Yeah.